We're heading to the birds on this week's episode of the Animal Rescuers. Come on in. The Animal Rescuers has been adopted by Pet Planet. There is nothing more important to us than your pet's health. Kurt, thank you so much for having us here today, and we are at the Arizona Exotic Bird Rescue. I am, this is going to be really, really awesome because birds need rescue too, and tell everyone why. Um, the reason why birds need rescue is because we're getting flooded with a very large number of birds. And just like there's puppy and cat mills, there's also bird mills. So the bird mills are created so that the people can make money and then they sell them and the birds end up in a disruptive home or an abusive home because people don't know how to care for them. So they need rescue, that's where you come in. So actually there are um, quite a few birds that come in, about 70% of them are abused. Um, Murphy is one of our stars of the rescue. Um, she's approximately nine years old. She's a Moluccan cockatoo. Um, she was raised by an alcoholic that used to beat her with a broom. Um, she is the sweetest bird on the planet. She's very quiet, especially for a Moluccan. Um, very non-destructive to objects. However, she is a self-mutilator. So, And that's due to the stress of her abuse. Of her environment. A lot of times people walk into bird stores and as long as they have money, they can walk out with any bird that they um, that they have money to purchase without being educated on the front side of what they're getting themselves into. These birds live 40, 60, 80, 100 years. So generally people don't buy them until later in life when they can afford them. Um, unfortunately, they don't have the years ahead of them to outlive the bird. So. Then the birds pass to family members who, trust me, don't want your animals. <laughs> no, they don't. You know, there's no contingency plan on the backside. So that's why it's so important when we're getting these birds from pet stores as babies for us to understand what is the provisions we're going to make for them on the backside. So there's a lot of education that goes into birds, and I would think so much more than cats and dogs because birds are in a cage but they don't need to be contained to that cage area. It causes stress and they start plucking feathers and self-mutilating, etc. So please give us some tips on different types of bird care on the different types of birds. Basically an overall blanket statement is birds are flocking animals. Uh, so birds a lot of times when your bird's caged for long periods of times and they start screaming, they're not screaming to annoy you, they're screaming because they want to be part of the flock. So they're trying to get your attention. A lot of people think that it's funny that their bird makes a microwave noise or a doorbell noise or a telephone noise. The reason why they're doing that is because when the microwave rings, what do we do? We get up and walk to it. The telephone rings, especially in the old days, because it was hanging on the wall, we'd get up and walk to it. So the bird starts ringing or beeping because we walk to it. So they're thinking, okay, it worked for them, so I'll just start doing it. That's a way of them calling us. But a lot of people don't think of it back into the psychology part of it. Birds are generally, psych um, they have the mentality of a three to five year old. They're not a cat or a dog. Mm -hmm. So. Um, Alex, I think, don't quote me on this, but I think he had a cognate vocabulary of like 380 words. Uh -huh. So um, if an animal has that type of, knows what they're saying, you know, they can actually carry on a conversation. They tell you when they want, a lot of people have trained their birds to say, come here, or they've potty trained their birds. Um, so 
things like that are not far-fetched. So when people come in to rescue a bird, do you educate them before? Like I know the uh, cat and dog rescue, they qualify the people, they go to the home and make sure that everything is in order for that pet to go there. Do you do the same thing with your birds? Absolutely. Um, we have, the reason for moving into the much bigger facility was to start focusing in on the education part of it because until we start educating the general public on truly what it is to own a bird, we're never going to stop the flood of unwanted birds, which is not going to happen. So before you can adopt a bird from us, um, we let our birds pick where they go. So you come in, we're going to be walking you around, introducing you to every bird. At that time, we're telling you a little bit about every species. The reason why we're doing that is to give the bird a chance to interview you as well as you to get to know the bird a little bit and we can build on that relationship. What else can we do to help your organization? First and foremost, always monetary donations. Um, our rent on our facility is about $60,000 a year. Does not cover electricity or any other stuff that goes with it. Uh, vet cost, food cost, you know, goes on and on and on. All the way down to a bag of fruit. Um, if you have fruit in your refrigerator that's getting ready to go bad, bring it down, we, we'll feed it to someone right away, you know. Um, nuts are always a great thing. Toys, bird toys of any, of any style, as long as they're bird safe. Um, newspaper, vinegar, I mean, paper towels. We're, we're nonprofit, we need everything we can get. Do you trust the food you feed? At Pet Planet, our commitment is to helping our customers navigate through the confusing world of pet food, reading ingredient panels, asking critical questions about manufacturing and ingredient quality. Our pets rely on us to make the very best decisions we can for their health, happiness, and longevity. Pet Planet is here as your partner in pet health because there's nothing more important to us than your pet's health. You can be a part of the animal rescuers also, making a difference for the animals and bringing your business to center stage. Become a sponsor for the show. Ad rates are very low for the summer, so now is the time to jump on board. And you can be an animal rescuer too. Make the call. Welcome back to the Animal Rescuers, adopted by Pet Planet. Welcome back, and hopefully I can talk Kurt into letting us tour this wonderful facility. I always take every opportunity to show off our cat feathered kids. So let's go. <laughs> Let you lead the way. Okay. Um, this is our edu free education library. It's open to the public seven days a week. Um, as you can see, we have a DVD player with bunch, a bunch of different training um, DVDs. We have tons of books. We have probably every issue of Bird Talk magazine. This is a fairly large facility. What is this over here? Uh, this is all of our retail section. It's a separate corporation for profit. The reason for this is we sell everything at about 60% less than you can buy it anywhere else. So that way your bird can still have high quality food mm -hmm. and you can afford to buy a toy for your bird sure. and all these other things. The proceeds from this corporation go to fund the, for, the nonprofit corporation. So when people purchase over here, they're actually helping us feed the rescue birds on this side. Well, we are full to the gill in here, huh? We are. We are very full right now, that's for sure. We get a lot of owner surrender. We work with both counties. We work with the Humane Societies. We, you know, we've done all that part of it. That's why it's so important to start the education piece of it. Uh -huh. Because as much as we're doing on this end, it's not enough. And you did, you touched briefly on the e-list for birds. Yes. Do they, do, do they euthanize birds? Currently, that's not accepted, okay? But if we don't do something soon about the large population of unwanted birds, we would hate for it to get to the situation like cats and dogs, where that's an acceptable means of population control. We don't want that to happen. Let's come around to the front area. These okay. birds all live on stands. This is Murphy that we briefly talked about earlier. Um, 
she was the one that was actually raised. Hey, pretty birdie. Oh, yeah, Murphy <laughs> I took her to our last presentation for the Arizona Humane Society. Our presentation is approximately 45 minutes long, and she stole the show. And I talked to you earlier about Murphy, the, the lack of feathers. They're not going to grow back. No. This Hi. is a pure sign of the worst kind of abuse because she was beat with a broom. Um, it's not the worst that we've seen. We've actually had birds that have been held over barbecue grills. Oh, I know and I'm we've sorry. also have there's also plenty of birds out there that self-mutilate much worse than just removing feathers. There's actually birds that eat holes in themselves. Sure, this yeah. is Stevie. Um, she's a product of bad breeding. This is uh, Manny. Manny spent a lot of time in a pet store. He's approximately in his mid to late 20s. This is Amelie McCaw Rambo. Um, came to us from a great situation where the people just got elderly and had uh, signs of Alzheimer's or something, and they were forgetting to feed their birds. This is an African Grey. He's a Congo. Oh, okay. Um, he had a phenomenal life. He sat between two elderly people for about 20 years in their recliners. Um, does not like to be held, but loves to talk because they sat there all day, watch TV with him, and talk to him. So he has a phenomenal vocabulary. He's a great bird. Thank you so much for the tour and introducing us to your birds. Do you mind if Corey and I look around your store some more? No, absolutely. Feel free. We're, we try to have a warm family environment, so we're open to the public. So come on down and hang out. Yeah. That's perfectly fine. Thank you. The first Pet Planet store opened in 1996 after the devastating loss of our Cocker Spaniel to cancer. What we learned then about pet health was eye-opening. The food and the treats that we were giving him did not support his immune system and may have actually harmed him. Pet Planet was established to be a community resource, a store that offers only the healthiest products and the best knowledge on pet health issues. At Pet Planet, there is nothing more important to us than your pet's health. You can be a part of the animal rescuers also, making a difference for the animals and bringing your business to center stage. Become a sponsor for the show. Ad rates are very low for the summer, so now is the time to jump on board. And you can be an animal rescuer too. Make the call. Welcome back to the Animal Rescuers, adopted by Pet Planet. This is our boy Rocco. Rocco was saved from the euthanasia list at the Maricopa County Animal Care and Control Westside Shelter. He was just so beautiful with those dashing eyes, we could not pass him up. He's about 10 months old. He's neutered. He currently lives in a pack with five other dogs in a house that has a big pool. He loves to swim. He gets along with little children. He gets along with cats. He even gets along with chickens. So Rocco is a perfect turnkey family pet. He will love you forever. Hey everyone, I'm Yanni with Balancing Paws and this here is Brad Pitt, uh, one of my client's dogs who's here for some leash and dog reactivity and he tries to bite, uh, bite people when they try to put him into a kennel or a uh, closed space. So what I'm going to show you today is how we use, uh, we, you've seen it before on the show, we use the little, the little place mats, how we get them to go on them um, because I know you've seen how we use them to get them to stay on them and to calm down. I'm going to show you how we get it started and we actually have another little bit of distraction over there. We have another pit bull just sitting on the, on the couch um, acting as a distraction for Brad Pitt over here so we can get him to go on. So first thing we do since we haven't actually showed him or, or introduced him to uh, to the object. So I'm just going to guide him on there with, by just walking over there with him. Um, and there's going to be a couple of things that he does and we'll, we'll see which ones he do, which ones he does do. And I'll explain to you the ones he doesn't. So here we go. If he does what he just did and he doesn't try to get off of the placemat, we're going to reward him by saying the word place and also giving him a little pat on the head and, and telling him he's a good boy because we want him to learn that the word place means to actually 
be on this place and not anything else like trying to fight to get off or you know being halfway on or anything like that so it's kind of doing it step by step by step and after he's been on it for a while we'll take him off by releasing him okay give him a little bit of a release word you can use okay let's go uh, whatever whatever your heart desires so there's all types of different ways to do it so now that we've done it with him once or twice we're going to take him on one more time place and if he gets off right there, we're just going to lift up and very gently lift upwards. And once he goes back into our positioning, we loosen that leash and let him know that it, that's exactly what we wanted. We can give him a little bit of affection and uh, and move away from it. So, and you know, I don't know if you noticed, but she just sneezed, and he gave a little bit of a uh, he gave a little bit of a quick movement. So that's what we're doing here is showing him that it's unnecessary for him to get so nervous around things like just a simple sneeze or somebody coming in through the door. So this can help with all types of things, um, especially which what he's here for is going into, into kennels because we could teach him uh, that the kennel is just like any other place. I'm Yoni with Balancing Paws and I'll see you next time on The Animal Rescuers. Hello again, welcome back. I'm Dr. Krista Gibson from Animal Medical Services and this is At The Vet. Today we're going to talk about something that is very, very common and probably most of us can relate to. Do you have a flabby tabby or a pudgy pooch? Obesity is not just an epidemic in humans, it's an epidemic in our pets as well. Over 88 million of our pets are considered to be overweight, and 30% of them are obese. There are several reasons that this seems to be happening, but probably one of the most prominent is that we have gotten so used to seeing all of our pets being overweight that fat is now the new normal. We don't even recognize when our pets are overweight because we don't know what normal looks like. A recent study showed that while 80% of our pets are overweight, only 20% of owners perceived their pets as overweight. Carrying all those extra pounds is bad for us and it's also bad for our pets. Kidney disease, heart disease, lung disease, and exacerbation of arthritis all happen when we're overweight. In addition, any anesthetic procedure, if your pet is overweight, it automatically makes them at a higher anesthetic risk than an underweight or normal weighted pet. So what do you do when your pet is overweight? Well, the equation is maddeningly simple. Calories in, calories out. If your pet is eating too much, it's gaining weight. If your pet is not getting enough exercise, it's gaining weight. So how can you reduce the calorie intake? Well, you can increase your exercise, and not only is that good for your pet, it's good for you too. You can also put them on a lower calorie food, or if you really need to, you can see your veterinarian and get a very calorie restricted food. Probably the main pitfall that we all run into though is treats. Just like with us, it's really easy to snack and we love to show our pets we love them by giving them stuff that they enjoy. But you can help change that by giving them better treats. Broccoli, carrots, Cheerios, those are all very good low calorie treats that you can still have the ritual, handing them something they enjoy, they get excited, everybody's happy, but you're lowering the caloric intake. If you have a seriously overweight pet, see your veterinarian and they can get you on a prescription diet that is extremely calorie restricted and that will help your pet lose weight with a lot less effort on your part. You just measure their food, their calorie level goes down, and with time, they will lose weight. Studies have shown that pets that are not overweight, that live a normal weight, will live up to two years longer than overweight pets. And when your lifespan is 70, 80, 90 years, that doesn't seem like a big deal. But if your lifespan is 10, you can have your pet for another two years. That can make a huge difference. Thanks again for coming to visit us at the vet. I'm Dr. Krista Gibson from Animal Medical Services, and we'll see you next time. Do you trust the food you feed? At Pet Planet, our commitment is to helping our customers navigate through the confusing world of pet food, reading ingredient panels, asking critical questions about manufacturing and ingredient quality. Our pets rely on us to make the very best decisions we can for their health, happiness, and longevity. Pet Planet is here as your partner in pet health because there's nothing more important to us than your pet's health. You can be a part of the animal rescuers also, making a difference for the animals and bringing your business to center stage. Become a sponsor for the show. Ad rates are very low for the summer, so now is the time to jump on board. And you can be an animal rescuer too. Make the call. Hi, I'm 
I'm Jen, and this is Pet Planet's Pet Tip of the Week. As pet guardians, we want to provide your dogs with things to chew on. It's your dog's natural instinct to chew, so satisfying this need is not only important to their mental well-being, but also helps to develop strong muscles in their jaw and helps to keep your dog's teeth clean. One thing that loving pet guardians often do not realize is that rawhide is very dangerous to your pet's health. Rawhide is not digestible, and when swallowed, will swell three to four times its size in the liquid environment of the stomach. These swollen pieces are not digestible, so can get lodged in the digestive tract, resulting in injuries from stomach upset to complete blockage that will require immediate emergency treatment. Additionally, during the manufacturing process, rawhide is treated with toxic chemicals such as lime solution or bleach. These are highly caustic to your pet and should be avoided at all costs. Now that you understand the dangers of feeding rawhide, you're probably asking yourself, well, what is the safe alternative? Here at Pet Planet, we strongly recommend a beef chew. This is just the muscle that's been fully dehydrated. It's 100% digestible and it's low in fat. So for those of you who are looking for a low calorie treat for your pet, this is a great option. It comes in a variety of shapes and sizes that every pet's gonna love. You have a basic stick, you have braided chews that tend to last a little bit longer, and then also beef chews that are in a curly shape, again, that are gonna help to last a little bit longer. Stay tuned each week for another Pet Planet Pet Tip. There's more of the animal rescuers coming right up. Come here. Okay. <laughs> Dad. Welcome back to the Animal Rescuers, adopted by Pet Planet. Before we go, I just want to ask you why you love birds so much. <laughs> You know, because you said they call you the bird. <laughs> Ever since I was a teenager, I've had a fascination with birds. And I don't know, maybe it's because my mom made me robin, but birds have always been interesting to me. I've been a dog person and a bird person, and birds are like children. They're so cool. They're very playful. They're very loving. I mean, look at this little guy. He's sitting here playing with me like he's playing tug of war. He's such a sweetheart. And they can sit on your shoulders. And, and, and I'll tell you, the, the greatest thing in the world about these animals, you can sit them on your shoulder, and it's the best stress relaxer in the world. It's, be you it's, better, it's better than a glass of wine. It's better than anything. Look at this. It, it, they keep you so calm because they're so delicate, uh -huh. and it doesn't take much to hurt them, as, you, as you've seen with some of the birds around here the damages that they've, they've had incur over their years, but they're such a delicate creature. You have to be extra special around them and give them so much care not to hurt them. So, so Kiki is available for adoption? Yes, he is actually. Okay. He's playing with you. See, Kiki, the, you want to say hi? Come here. Say hi, Kiki. Go see, go see Kimber. Come here, Kiki. No. I'm not used to, you've got small fingers. No. That's probably what it is. <laughs> Put your arm out. Maybe he'll climb on your arm. Come here, Kiki. There you there go. You Look go. at that. Okay. Okay. Oh, he likes you. See, he wants that shoulder. We'd like to thank you so much for joining us on this week's episode of the Animal Rescuers. This is my new friend, Kiki. Hi, Kiki. This is Kimberly reminding you, adopt, donate, volunteer. Kiki, it's my turn. And share our show on Facebook, and you can be an animal rescuer, too. I can talk louder than you, Kiki. <laughs> See you next time. <laughs> you are your buddy. <laughs> this week we're heading to the birds on. This, no, it doesn't sound right. Yeah. No, we are heading to the birds on this week. There you go. Okay, why don't you do it? <laughs> Carrying all those excess pounds is not only bad for us, it's bad for our pets too. Kidney disease, heart disease, lung disease, all are more prominent when we have overweightness. Overweightness? <laughs> <laughs> we have overweightness. Oh, what happened there? There he goes. <laughs>